Are you ready? It's time for the Sudbury MMA Podcast. And bam, we are live. This guy's sitting here with uh, Kyle Fletcher. What's up? Hey. And Darren, the champ, ears, yeah. champagne. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> All right, guys. So the uh, we're coming off a fantastic Your weekend. Is yours <laughs> fucking disgusting? Well, you know what? Uh, that's uh, the result of you know some homemade surgeries. Yeah, and, homemade uh, surgeries. Yeah. The guys, the guys rolling every match in the gym like it's the Monday L's gold medal. Yep, yeah. and that's what happens, man. That's yeah. Right. And then uh, next thing you know, what you need uh, some type of surgery on that ear to replace it and fix it. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Wear like a badge of honor. You go to it the is. bar and it looks totally. cool. Yeah. yeah. Girls ask you why are your ears so gross. You just say that is nature's way of warning other human beings that other you are a man. Animals. Yeah, that you are not someone to be messed with. I have with dogs it. running away from me. You're the man, dude. Yeah, exactly, bro. <laughs> so, guys, we just came off a great weekend. We had the uh, Nomad event in Northern Fights, so we're just here to kind of recap the entire weekend. Kyle, man, what did you uh, what'd you like best about the weekend? You know what? I really liked the uh, the fights. At the end of the day, like I, I, I liked the jiu-jitsu. I really enjoyed the Nomad uh, event. I liked the fights, though. It was a tiring day, though, bro. Like, you know, we showed up there at 8, set up the jiu-jitsu. Yeah, I mean, like, well, first of all, it started Friday night, really. Yeah. You know, we had a, a session with Silver Fox. Yeah. One of our uh, featured instructors. You know, our I mean, affiliates and, from New York. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, peop- for for everyone who knows Silver Fox, he's like an amazing man, uh, an amazing jujitsu instructor. You know, Very he, knowledgeable man. Yeah, super like, knowledgeable. Super, super, bro. Super giving. He wants nothing but the best for you know us here in Northern Ontario. He's come up numerous times. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, he's like giving, giving, giving. Like, yeah, I feel like that. he's like almost, you know, he's really made it feel like, you know, part of the family. Like oh, he comes down sure. here, he treats everyone like he's known forever, right? You yeah. Know? He's actually, he's a really awesome guy. We went out to dinner dinner with him. And yeah, Friday night, went out for yeah. dinner with him. You know, the, it was awesome. Didn't get home till you know, a little later. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, bam, first thing in the morning, Saturday, we're setting up mats uh, before everybody gets there. You know, met the hammer at the, at the venue, did the mats, and then uh, boom, right into it, 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So... <laughs> and then moving on after that, right after the event, we did uh, we did our sessions, and then we, we we immediately like Nick came up to us. He's like, "Hey, bro, get all these mats out. Let's get the ring in." And then we we just crushed the ring in. Yeah. But uh, we're like, but we got that down pat. I mean, like that's a science, know, bro. Yeah, like at this point now, like I think we we ended the seminars at three o'clock, and between we were set up at like three thirty. Oh, we were like the ring was in the building and we were just doing tables and stuff, you know, like so within yeah. an, almost like within an hour, an hour and a half, we yeah. had the, the venue set up for the fights. So it was cool. cool. And then, of course, you know, we had the weigh ins at four o'clock. Mm-hmm. I think I tried to upload some Snapchats, but I don't know if they uploaded because of the Wi Fi issue. But, uh, you know, I try, I'll try and see if I can re upload them. But anyway, the it was just insane, you know, between setting up the ring, having all the fighters come in to meet with the MTO, to do the blood work, meet the doctor, and then uh, I believe I had about five to seven minutes to wolf down a sub and then the doors opened and it was go time dude i didn't even have anything to eat bro i think no. I, I think emily came by and brought me a salad that's all i ate yeah. i ate rabbit and don't food, forget bro. that they started off with uh you getting your black belt oh yeah that's right food. we totally yeah, forgot about that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. john we just get there first thing in the morning pat gives john his black belt yeah it was pretty crazy. very well deserved yeah, very, very well deserved well. um it was pretty exciting it was uh you know, I'm still actually at a bit of a loss. You know, it's funny because uh, the weekend kind of flew by yeah. with everything that went on. Taught class tonight, and of course, you know, students are kind of pumped. And so, what like goes that. through your mind when you get your black belt? Like, I know for me, like, dude, when I got my blue belt, I felt like, bro, like this is, I, you know, you don't, because when you, obviously when you start training, you see the big gap between, yeah. you know, the skill. Th- what do you? I think, like, like you said, like blue belt was an exciting belt because you know you're not a white belt anymore, right? Yeah, exactly. And then I think there's like a lot of people, like you know, they build up this idea of black belt. Um, you know, for me, there was really no difference. Actually, to be honest with you, the uh, there was a lot of like the. the did you gain ma- like mystical powers? Like. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like now I can tap people out just looking at them and yeah, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I mean like, you know, um, it was funny because, you know, for the people that that were there, they saw you know that we had all the uh, kind of like the senior black belts in the province that were at the event, and um, these are guys that you know. Like, <laughs> When I first started, I looked up to a lot of these guys, like Professor Omar Salvosa and mm-hmm. Professor Dan Maroney and, and Marco Costa and all these guys. Like these are guys that I obviously looked up to. And then that's not uh, to say, you know, that's sorry, that's just outside of our affiliation. Never mind, like you know, like Hammer and of course Pat and Silver Fox. These are all people I've looked up to for years. So Hanzo, it's like, Han- Dan- Han- 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 yeah, like I mean, like so you know, they give you a black belt, and it's like I almost felt. Uh, 
like I shouldn't be putting on a black belt in all these guys' presence, you know. Yeah. But uh, they were really awesome. Like they were like super quick to tell me, "Hey man, go put your gi on." Like every time I took my gi off, they're like, "Go put that gi back on and put that black belt back on," you know. Like, and I was kind of saying, "Man, you know, it's uh, I don't feel like a black belt necessarily." Mm-hmm. And they're like, "Don't worry, everybody feels like that." And it's almost like. It's probably true. I, I, I think back to, I think every one of us, you know, like when you first got your purple, for example, yeah. you know, did you feel like a purple belt at first? No. No. And then, you know, after a while, it's like you kind of like mature into the belt. Yeah. I think, I think that's where I'm at now. Like, yes, you know, a black, a brand new black belt, you know, uh, kind of recording this podcast and it's less than 48 hours as a black belt. And, you know, I think I just have a, a ways to go before I, yeah. I mature into the belt and uh, whatnot. Now it's just... You know, instead of, you know, all my students tapping me out at brown belt, they're tapping me out at the, you know, black belt now. So no big deal. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, yeah. nonetheless, a big honor. And uh, I hope to represent our team, our team well. So that's, mm-hmm. that's my goal with that. You plan on competing? 100%. I'm probably going to compete at the uh, Masters Worlds uh, this year. So, yeah. you know, I'm going to jump in with the Sharks and uh, hopefully I don't draw like a Zanji, you know, Ribeiro or something yeah, crazy yeah, yeah. like that. You know? What are your thoughts of uh, being called professor? Uh, it's funny because like, to be honest, uh, I first got my my karate black belt in you know 1994 or something like that. So, and uh, you know I was called sensei for forever type thing in the kids classes. I believe a lot of them still call me sensei. Um, yeah, so I mean like it's it's uh, I I understand it's just a formality that kind of goes along with the the BJJ black belt and stuff like that. You know, uh, for me personally, and I think for a lot of all of our students and friends that are here, John is obviously cool. But, but what uh, about for the kids, especially the kids? Yeah, I is think that like something that you I've already noticed, expect? like literally day two, and the culture has already shifted a little bit in, in the in the academy where you know I'm walking in and people are saying, "Hey, professor," you know, stuff like that. So yeah. I think uh, I think that's something again that will kind of mature with the rank and you know something that I'll grow into and feel mm-hmm. more comfortable with as time goes on. But man, enough about the black belt stuff, guys. The uh, I want to kind of focus back in on the fights, like the because uh, you know to be honest with you, like we started these northern fights what was it Kyle 2016 or something yeah. you know and uh, our our goal and our objective was to always bring amateur combat sports here to northern Ontario and give you know people here locally uh, a venue where they can compete in their hometown and not mm-hmm. have to travel several hours to do anything right so I always get excited about these fights like Kyle said the jiu-jitsu is cool the fights are just as cool and uh, <laughs> let's let's dive right in here for time's sake let's make sure that we can kind of talk a, bit, a little bit about every fight yeah, yeah. we opened up the fight with William from here from uh, of course from Subway MMA versus uh, Jaden from Black Lotus what do you guys think about that fight that was a good fight that was uh, that was a great fight I was really impressed with uh, William's performance in that yeah. fight he just the other uh, kid was apparently a provincial champion. Actually, it's funny you say that because, like, uh, me and Kyle, I think, cornered all night <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, I, and, I didn't uh, get off the stool. Yeah, man. I was, I was tired. Everyone, bro. I think uh, there was one fight where we went and got food and came right back. But yeah, exactly. I, I, I distinctly remember them announcing, like, credentials and whatnot, and they were like, you know, provincial champion this and this weight go champion. And I'm looking at Kyle, and I'm thinking, how many fights does this young guy have? <laughs> you know, it's like, but... Uh, well, them crap. Yeah, William, William went out there and, and William did work. Yeah. William, William. He fought with with a purpose. Yeah. Like, knee after knee after yeah. knee, just go go go. Yeah, we just yeah. That's from being all we told him was like yeah. try to you know put him in the corner, William, and then just you know punch 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 punch. Because with that at that age group they can't strike to the head, right? They can strike to the body and they can strike to the legs. So you know it works pretty well because then he can push in the corner, learn ring control, right? When the kid moves, that kid moves very well, especially in the clinch when you know William would tie oh, yeah, up with he him. Would, he would really yeah, turn. Yeah, he would he would turn, push, yeah. turn, right, and force William. William, had, what impressed me the most was William's adaptability at such a young age, right? To recognize if I push, I'm going to get pulled and turned, right? I have grown adults that still don't even understand that. I, I believe his, his grappling experience might play a role in that too. Yeah, you know, but uh, sense of balance. Yeah, he's yeah, got yeah. a great sense of balance and he's athletic. And he's got good ring awareness. For yeah, him. yeah, yeah. Like it was hard for the the young guy to throw him and whatnot. Yeah, to do even anything. Yeah. Right? So I mean, the uh, and he listened actually really well to the corner. Yeah. You know, and it's like funny Kyle's too because right after the fight, before the fight, I don't. I think you were out there, you know, with the people. But he was like, he came up to me. He was crying. He didn't want to go out there. And he's like, oh, I don't was he like, nervous. Really? Yeah, he's just that much nervous. Yeah, like, no, I did not know that. Yeah, I'm like, relax, William. You'll be fine. Just get out there. You know, you're gonna. That's where fun. your strength as a coach comes in. Yeah. I'm in the <laughs> I'm in the back. I'm telling him like, William. Swear, give me a big F yeah. yeah. He's like, I don't want to. Yeah. He's actually very competitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's I'm trying why to get, he does so yeah, well. Exactly. You, you want to know one of the things that actually, uh, one of the highlights for me, uh, you know, of course, as a like a, a an academy head instructor type thing, where not only was the fight you know good and that William won that fight, but like as he went back 
to the so he went to go see the doctor after the fight and then we had probably like you know where the fighter's entrance was yeah there was probably like six or seven of our kids of the little kids like yeah and they were hey, waiting there yeah, to yeah. like high five him and congratulate him and i thought like man that is such a, a great sign of respect sportsmanship yeah, yeah, and team. yeah that was cool yeah like i i thought like man you know what we're doing something right here yeah. you know like win or lose like we're doing something right or all of our kids were there to cheer him on and support him and it, i thought that was absolutely it, it kind of reminded me of like you know like that that ohl hockey community you know when the when they you know like the wolves like when i was a kid right i'd yeah. wait for them at at the gate yeah, you yeah. know to give them high fives right same thing you know like all the kids is if either we would be going in or coming out yeah. of the ring they would like you know want high fives yeah us. i thought that was I, I i was like super impressed with that and it made me very excited thinking like man the you know what we're building you know at, yeah. at our academy subway mma like that culture right? yeah like it, it was amazing to see and i was like super pr- actually that's probably to be honest with you one of the highlights of my of, of the night for me type thing mm-hmm. is seeing that amongst you know that camaraderie being built amongst the kids so yeah that was awesome second match we had owen <laughs> You know, oh, take man. on a young man from dark side yeah that was a wild fight bro that was that was uh i we knew we, we both knew that was going to be like i a, a a really competitive match oh between the two right dark side is, is yeah no dark joke. side they're no know, joke of a gym crew uh daryl marin yeah he's got some you know tough guys we've had wars with some other guys in the past i remember nick when he fought that kid in niowa and yeah like, so anyway yeah we knew they'd come prepared and uh, what a great fight! Like yeah. I, I can see like those two young guys having like a little bit of a rivalry as time yeah, goes always, on. Yeah, always. Oh yeah, I could see him chasing. I could see both of them chasing. Always ending up in the same division, yeah. fighting each other. Oh yeah. Owen's boxing was phenomenal. Uh, his adaptability within the ring, right? I, I I would like to see more pressure. But again, like even that young guy, right? That young wouldn't give Owen an inch. Every time Owen scored, he was coming right. Oh back yeah, he him. was like you know the kick kick back theory. Yeah, like, that was definitely there. Like, yeah. You know, so no, it was super impressive, and it was like an exciting fight, and it was an exciting thing to see for what's coming. Exactly. You know, fights, you know exactly. I mean? like that, right? That's yeah. like the next generation coming. It mm-hmm. was like pretty, pretty crazy. Speaking of next generation, we have uh, Liam as well. Liam Leclerc took on a young man, Boomer from uh, Ottawa. <laughs> First of all, Boomer is the coolest nickname ever. Yeah, you know? that was like, a pretty wild fight, man. Yeah. Yeah, Liam, obviously the much taller, bigger, uh, bigger fighter. Uh, Boomer was, you know, a bit, a little bit more shorter and stocky. And it was a classic, you know, long game versus short game. Liam being the southpaw, uh, we did work a lot of range stuff. Um, it was a close fight. I, I think that Liam, I think like the opening round, I think Liam was uh, pulled ahead a little bit. Yeah. But I think Boomer figured out the puzzle. Exactly. You know, and then yeah. and, and, uh, kind of imposed his yeah. uh, short game, you know. Exactly. I, I, in-game type thing a little bit more, so. What was the big determining factor was... Um, Liam opened up, kept him at range really good, right, with that. And then he, I think in the first round he hit him with a, with a right hook and a left kick because Liam stands southpaw, right? Yeah. So I guess, you know, they, they, they kept backing up, backing up, and they, you know, Boomer would come in, one, two, three, tag him, tag him really good, and then run away. And then Liam would want to get that point back and chase, right? So when he would chase, he'd plant, crack him again, plant, crack him again. And it was just the chase game is the distance, and I, it wasn't – it's the it all comes down to experience, right? Liam will come back and be better from this one. Uh, congratulations to Boomer from, from oh, for all, sure, you know, for sure. The uh, <laughs> James the Zombie De Roche, coolest nickname ever <laughs> in his match against Rahul from uh, Owama as well. Yeah, got to see why they call him the Zombie. Yeah, you know, just moving forward doesn't matter, taking punches, yeah, taking you know, punches, like, knees, kicks. Yeah, like you literally have to put him out. Yeah, you no, know? and even then, I think he got dropped in the second, and he just got back up and still kept going forward, man. Yeah, he's one of those guys that you don't want to fight. Like you're just like, man, what the fuck? Go down, stay yeah, down. Yeah, he won't stay down. No. And you know what? I have to say, like, I don't know Rahul very well, but like, uh, just like my uh, brief correspondence with him online and you know dealing with him, what a professional polite young man like just yeah. a great great guy mm-hmm. uh you know hopefully they get to know him better as we you know go down and train with the guys at a yeah. and stuff like that but like super super nice guy and uh you know what nothing but great things to say yeah. about that guy true that blaine hopper man okay so this is a little bit of a controversial fight because i i did get a little bit of flack from some people um both me and, okay so the, the story of the fight goes blaine and who is his opponent from ottawa uh remember his name no i don't remember his name uh sorry i forgot his name if, um but anyways blaine and his opponent square up they actually have some pretty good exchanges within the first minute his opponent was tough yeah and it was a pretty it was a pretty even fight and then blaine got cracked he got clipped clean dropped he got up 
And what a lot of people didn't realize in the confusion... His gait. His gait was... His gait, yeah. So his walking cycle, right, going towards the neutral corner, he shouldn't have walked around the, the, the neutral corner, right? He was daisily walking as Daryl was counting him. His eyes weren't there. Daryl even came up to me after saying that if that was one of his guys, he would have thrown the towel. Oh, did he right say there. that? Yeah. yeah. So the, the, even the, the ref came up to me, right? He said that his eyes were okay. He said that his he stopped kind of lazily moving, but Daryl said that it was it could he could have stopped that fight right there, right? Yeah. You know what? This is the thing that's tough as a coach sometimes. Yeah. And uh, you know, like luckily, you know, Kyle's got a lot of experience as well, and we looked at each other, and I was like, "Yep, yeah, we have to call it." Uh, Blaine, I, we love Blaine. He's yeah. a great guy. And the problem is, you know, when some guys are just too tough for their own good. Yeah. That is Blaine. Yeah, exactly. Blaine is a guy that will go out on his yeah. shield. He, he yeah, he told me that in the back. He came oh, up to me and he was like, "Bro, like." Why I would have went out like why didn't you let me go out and I, you know what it's you know if it's a professional fight maybe yeah. you're getting paid big money you know but like it's his first amateur fight first fight right you don't need to get a, a life changing concussion you no know? no you don't I mean, you only get you know I, I, no it's not gonna happen under our watch yeah it's exactly not and I've seen it too many times right and someone they, with potential gets a bad concussion they get caught here's the reality Blaine's probably a little upset with us hopefully not too upset. But uh, he's going to come back. He's going to train. And I can 100% guarantee you that man will get back in the ring again. Exactly. Like he's again, and he will come back harder. Yeah. That's yeah, just the way he is. He's an absolute workhorse, like mm-hmm. for sure. Um, this was actually an exciting fight. Brandon Soon versus Paul Dizzy Dumont. I missed that. Oh, did you really? I didn't get to see that. I was in the back getting ready. I was That fight else. was a back and forth. I heard that was a war. war. Yeah, yeah, it was It was actually probably one of the... the Someone got killed that fight? I heard like one person got dropped. Then yeah, they would, they, and they would drop each other back. Yeah, right. It was like absolutely insane. You know, it's funny because uh, Brandon, Brandon soon kind of ghosted me before the fight like he drove me crazy you know oh, luckily, he wasn't responding no he wasn't responding to emails like you know like luckily i had dean that was kind of keeping me in the Is loop brandon and stuff. the uh, younger brother yeah, yeah brandon's the younger brother but i guess he ghosted me like you know he's uh not not anything on purpose like you know he's just he was like focused in on training and dean's yeah. like no no he's good he's good he's just focusing on the training and all this kind of stuff and man did it ever show during that fight nah it was a great fight paul fought paul dizzy dumont yeah he's from action jackson you know that anybody who comes from action jackson is a tough cut from a yeah, different cloth like they're just they're just tough man they just show up and you're like you show up you accept the fight from action jackson and you're like fuck like it's gonna be a war yeah like, you're, you don't you're not going in there for an easy fight no you're going in the so grind. where are they from north bay north, north bay, bay Mattawa. yeah and like you you know that like it's gonna Fun be a boys. grinder they're usually coming in in great shape yeah. and they are tough as nails yeah they just don't give a shit yeah mm. but uh brandon soon from the gorilla dojo man he took it to him and uh, came away with the win so congratulations to him bro yeah exactly pat gerard Pat Gerard. The beefcake. Number one, and I actually said this to him, you know, when they announced his nickname, uh, I'm, I'm standing beside him at the ropes, and I'm like, bro, you should have fucking warned me about your nickname, this beefcake thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what? He's awesome. laughing. He's like, he's like, what? That's what he said. He's like, what? That's an awesome nickname. I'm like, holy shit, man. You know, there was a lot of questionable kind of... nicknames. My, my take on nicknames, I think they're totally stupid man i don't I like know. Nicknames. I, I hate nicknames i love nicknames it's so cheesy it's because no, like, there's always a story you might as well be a professional wrestler nickname no you need nicknames man like jake the snake like that's everyone's nickname no like, that's an awesome nickname oh man so I like, hate yeah. nicknames so pat the beefcake gerard you know <laughs> a little bit of a controversial fight you know yeah Unf- no I, I unfortunately it went down the way it did uh um, my personal opinion and my observation as a coach, right? Like Pat is a great athlete. Pat Pat shows up in the ring. Uh, Pat, yeah, he trained. He trained consistently. Very hard. He trained hard, cut the weight, mm-hmm. dieted. He did everything he was yeah. supposed to do. I think he. I think he did tell me that he did have a bad weight cut. Uh, I. I I didn't even recognize him. Not that he looked bad, but yeah, he, yeah. because he's so muscular yeah, when yeah. he's in the gym. Yeah, which is okay. Like I mean, yeah. that part, but like that's he, part of the game. He also fought a guy that had a little bit more experience mm-hmm. than we, you know, we were anticipating. Yeah. Same thing. And you know, but to Pat's credit, he's like, no, no, I'm fighting that guy. No, I've exactly. For right. a while. Like, he, he went in there. He uh, he did what he had to do. Uh, Pat did actually rock him with a right hand over oh, yeah. the top. Even Nick was saying the same thing. He's like, yeah. He did, and Nick Nick came to me. And he's like, bro, if my boy took like two or three more of those, I'm throwing in the towel. Like he's getting knocked the fuck out. Yeah. So what I said, what you know, what I wish he would have let opened up a little bit more. That yeah. comes from ring experience, right? Yeah. And then he took a he took a couple knees. He got injured in the in the stomach. Uh, what what the ref did come up to me after because there was a controversial knee in the face at the end. Um, that's the fight game, right? Like you're, you're, 
you want to put someone out, right? Put someone down. Your your knee, 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 knee. And if you drop quickly to the knee, it's one of those things where it's yeah. like. But again, you know what? Like you said, it's fight game, and to Pat's credit, you know he was the consummate professional, and um, he 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 didn't he didn't complain, he didn't cry about yeah. it, he didn't you know make yeah. a scene. He no. just like, hey, whatever, man. He's and actually, next one, bro. At, at one thing he did say to me, and he kind of uh, you know in our conversation earned earned some respect for me. He's like, you know what, Johnny goes, uh, I probably would have done the same thing by accident too. So yeah. you know, it's let me think. No, exactly. And and you know what, fortunately. It's a fight game. You get in that ring, you either risk a win or a loss. I mean, like anyone's. I, I respect anyone who even steps in. Well, that's that ring. that's the thing, and this is the thing I'll say about our guys. We will like people talk about fighters fight, and you often hear people like, "Oh, fighters fight," and but but you know what? The fighters who talk that shit, that kind of shit, don't actually show. Some up of them, fight. yeah, don't. Like you know what? Like our guys will come in and fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you know I'll get you know the 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 belt maybe not the most technical that we want to see or whatnot. You know, but like to me, that's part of the learning experience, and I'm not gonna wait till someone trains five, six years before we put them in yeah. into a matchup. You that's get a like, lot of that. think about that. Imagine that happening in jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm. No. Like, no, you have to train five years before you can compete. No, you wipe out crushing everyone. Yeah, sand like, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. and that's what some of these people do. It's very dangerous too. Yeah, it's like, dangerous for everyone else, right? You get a guy O and O training yeah. five years between someone O and O. No, it's it's wrong. Two months, that's and then, and that's got that mentality has to change. Like people are so paranoid. You know, but oh, what if my guy loses? Okay, if what if he does? If he does, we're gonna bring him back to the gym and keep on training, just like in jujitsu. When a white belt goes into a tournament after six months of training, yeah. people forget these aren't professional yeah, fights. Amateur, these are amateur fights. Amateur. Yeah. No one's getting paid. These, That's right. These records don't matter. They're erased as soon as you enter the pros. Right. My goal is to have competitors who eventually have 300 fights. Amateur. Mm-hmm. You know, I would love to see that. You know, they start young, and eventually, you know, by the time they're 25. You know they're ready to turn pro when they've got 300 amateur mm-hmm. fights. That's that is the goal. For yes. Us. We look at boxers. Boxers are the same thing. Look at guys in Thailand. Yeah. Record doesn't even exist. The record yeah. isn't a big deal in Thailand. You oh, you know you've been there. Well, man, if they think if you have less than 100 fights, like, oh yeah, that's cute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, they don't give a shit. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're okay. You okay? You good? So getting to uh, like Lucas's match with uh, Kevin Romanowski here from. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was I was in the corner for that fight. Yeah. Uh, I saw that uh, Adam. Uh, you know what? I didn't know that Lucas was a southpaw. Uh, no, yeah, Lucas was fighting a southpaw. Sorry. Yeah. So you know the game kind of changes when you're fighting a southpaw. So for all of you, for those of you who don't understand what a southpaw is, it's 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 someone who leads with their right instead of their left. So when you're fighting a southpaw, I you know like you gotta go a specific way. You have to step left around them because if you go the normal way, into the you're going into their power hand. So you don't want to do that. So that's what kept happening. And then the second round, I stepped in, and uh, I told him, like, you know, Lucas, go yeah. the other way. Go the other way. Don't Luke, go the wrong way. Yeah, Luke's, and, a, Luke's another machine, man. Bro, he, he, know, he, he fought a guy that has, you know, undoubtedly some boxing experience. Yeah. Thing. You know, he may not have had that many. He may not have had fights and stuff, but he's been boxing a long mm-hmm. time and whatnot. And Lucas took it to him. Lucas, you know, I think at one point he got rocked pretty good, but he did not quit. No, he, he did not forward. quit. Didn't He didn't quit. He kept coming forward, right? And at the end of the fight, Lucas was like, oh, you know, like, he came out with the loss, unfortunately, but you know what? It was a back and forth fight. Like, oh yeah. There wasn't, there wasn't ever a point where I was like, oh man, this, you know, throw in the towel. Yeah. You know? no, no. no, it was good, man. It was, it was good. Like you said, it's an exhibition fight, and it was, it was great for both guys to get it, their feet wet. And mm-hmm. uh, I'm looking forward to see them both fight in uh, a regular matchup. Yeah. You know, uh, maybe not each other, but different opponents in yeah, the next one. Absolutely. Fights. One of my favorite fighters there, or one of our guys. Damn, Davin Reed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Davin Reed. Oh, man. Davin's been working like his ass off for this fight. Yeah, he, he was super pumped. You know, like, I think I saw him put out a post where he talks about bringing intensity to the uh, ring. And that's one thing I will say about Davin. He absolutely brings a significant amount of intensity. Yeah. You know, the um, I think the tough part for him right now is that, you know, like, he... he He's a he's a guy who loves everything. He loves jujitsu. He yeah. loves MMA. He loves Muay Thai. Mm-hmm. So you know he's in a Muay Thai fight, and like you know his his style of fighting is a little it's bit like more a, geared towards yeah, an MMA fighter. I saw that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he's like very low, very yeah, low. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like getting down, even the way he pushed the guy up into the ropes and stuff like that. Holding him like that. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? I, I will say that <clears throat> Davin's clinch was actually really really yeah, surprising. Better. His clinch. Did surprised you did you see that elbow? That elbow, bro. I, right I was like, <laughs> I could not believe it. Even the spinning, dude. The, yeah, the spinning one. Sp- yeah, the spinning elbows. Yeah. But he was, he, he, there was one where he put the guy, hit a guy 
over top, and he was hitting him with elbows, like the right elbow, right yeah. over top his guard. But that spinning elbow too was he was oh, setting yeah. up very well. Yeah. He kept. Uh, it's funny because he kept telling me too, because his last fight he you know he threw that spinning elbow. Remember he was just yeah. throwing it out of nowhere. Yeah, it's like yeah. no more spinning elbows. This fight goes in like first thing he throws. <laughs> bang. <laughs> Hit yeah. him though, man. Hit him clean. Yeah, that was a great fight. Yeah, I loved. I loved when they announced him as the winner and just the intensity and raw emotion that he had. I think mm-hmm. it's captured in one of the pictures. You can see it online. It's absolutely fantastic. I want to get a copy of that picture actually for the club. It's a really cool picture. Yeah. Another one of my favorite fighters and probably one of the absolute toughest guys I know. Dean S- No slacker. Oh, oh, that was a great fight. That was a beautiful fight. That was like that was high level Muay Thai. You know what? It's interesting because I'm I'm hoping that the fans can appreciate that. Yeah, that you wasn't know? like a brawl slugfest. That was like precision. Yeah. Each, each fighter was precise. Yeah. Actually, I, I I think I remember at one point like uh, I don't know if you remember this, but like we we were sitting in the corner obviously, and the guy had caught one of Slacker's knees. And Slacker had jumped, jumped up and kneed him with the other knee. Yeah. And I actually heard the fans behind me clapping, like, yeah. wow, you know, like really appreciating the Muay Thai there. And I was, I wasn't sure if people could see what was mm-hmm. happening or under, you know, uh, the casual fan could see the dynamics yeah. happening. But like the fact that I can hear the clapping in the crowd makes me think that uh, the crowd is actually pretty educated when yeah. it came to Muay Thai. It was, it was like, honest. Yeah. yeah. It was a, just a great fight. And you know, I, he took a ball shot at one point. And, uh, split his, split his yeah. cup, bro. Like he got hit so hard. <laughs> We're in the back, and he's like, "Look at this!" And he shows me his cup, and it's like broken in half. Yeah. And I'm like, "Holy Jesus!" He's like, "Yeah." He goes, "I'm pretty sore right now." Get the time metal cups, bro. Yeah, he was telling me yeah. that too. He's like, he was like had it on his like he had uh, ice actually. I walked in the yeah. back. He's sitting like, yo, well, full man spread, and let, <laughs> you know he had the he had the bag of peas on his on his boys. Yeah, well, it's funny because like, you know. I will, from now on, recommend our fighters wearing the Thai yeah, metal, metal cup. cups. And when people ask those me, like, Those stupid why, shock jaw cups, bro. Yeah, no, like, don't work. Those are garbage. That's yeah. good for, like, you know... Hockey. Hockey. Yeah, is stuff like that. Like, not when someone's kicking you with the, that type of velocity that it literally snaps the cup. I mean, good, like, kudos to that guy. He's got a hard kick, Oh, right? Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, uh, but, like, I mean, yeah, like you said, it was a great fight. A lot of knees, you know, like, that... That guy's his, tough. He is tough. That guy, there was I some think, knees, bro, that, like, he hit, slacker hits me with those knees in the gym and oh, yeah. drops some crushes, oh, yeah. me, bro. Folds and, like, me. this guy just kept on coming. Just like, kept coming up Darren, forward. Darren did tell me, like, he's like, hey, man, you know, my guy's a banger. He'll come. And I'm like, that's okay. I said, my guy is, you know, he's tough, too. Like, don't worry. You know, I said, it'll be good. So, like, we kind of had this understanding, like, okay, this is going to be a tough match. And, you know, it's like, uh, like you're saying, he said, hey, you know, slacker's sort of a diamond in the rough here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Daryl came up to me and he was talking about our guys. Uh, he's like, yo, bro. Slacker, man. D- Diamond in the rough. We always joke about it, too, saying, yeah, like, yeah. Slacker's the guy to show up, drink a beer during training. Oh, yeah. And it's funny, because he was so casual in that fight. Like, he, you know, he comes out to Piano yeah. Man, and he's laughing, looking at people in the crowd. Oh, yeah. You know, when he got kicked in the... He's got the ultimate dad bod. Yeah, when he, come, when he gets kicked yeah. in the junk, he goes to the corner. He's making jokes to the to the, to yeah. the head coach table. Yeah, like, he's like... Oh, you're in a fight, man. What are you doing? Yeah, no. yeah. He's telling the people at the head table that now he doesn't have to go for the surgery anymore. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he's just crazy. And that's exactly slacker, man. You know, you say he, he's freaking... He's one of a kind. Just shows up and will the fight. Remember when he showed up to that one fight? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he took a fight, you know, like this demo... Like, you know, the guy against a guy, you know, from way another bigger. school. Way, way bigger. bigger. You know, I think the other guy thought he was going to demo. Yeah, he's like, he's like, are you sure you want to do this, bro? You're so much smaller. It's like, oh, whatever. Let's yeah. go. Let's get a good one. Slacker in pretty much tunes the kid. Slaps him around, dude. Yeah. Slaps this him is, silly. And this is, this is a guy that, like, he posts videos all the time about training. and It's his year. Uh, yeah. It, it's his year every year, bro. <laughs> yeah, unless he meets Slacker. <laughs> <laughs> like, anyway, that's a, that's a whole other story. Um. This now this actually this this guy's another one of the fan favorites, one of my favorite guys too. And of course, as he walks out, you know, Dean Soon, you know, Dean the Super Saiyan. Everyone yeah. keeps saying that wrong. Him Soon. Which yeah. one was an orange? Is that that's him. That's yeah, yeah. The Dean one? yeah, yeah. He's he's exciting he to watch. The part. I loved it when he's in the ring. Yeah. And was it when they were announcing the fights? Like when they were announcing him, and he's like. <laughs> yeah, he gives him a, a kameha <laughs> to the people who don't know what that is, to the normal people. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's off of a Dragon Ball Z anime, and you know what? He does live the the code of. He does. If he you guys want to watch a great show, please go watch it. It's yeah, good. It, and it's just like man, him and Jeff, like they were telling me like this is going to be the fight, and you know they definitely brought you know yeah. the entertainment. It was a bloodbath. They brought the man. blood Holy every time. Sh- 
you know, the blood, the entertainment. I was in the corner. Decision. I was in the corner for Jeff. And I remember like. That was his mindset coming back to the corner. Like was he. Bro, he just was so casual. It just like he just. like I, That guy, I, I I don't know him super well. But I feel like I got to check his pulse all the time. Like, yeah. The guy is just he's, like. He's cold, man. I think that guy's a killer, bro. Yeah. He. There was a moment though. He's also where, undefeated in Northern fights. I know, man. There was a moment where he he put him in the corner. And Scott, me and Scott were sitting there. And Scott's yelling instructions at him, right? And he puts his head down, and he just starts punching him in the face, like Dean. But Dean's nose has been, you know, busted up by this point, right? He's bleeding all over. And I'm like, just hand out, like, I wish I had a splash guard, because I didn't want to get, you know, (laughs) blood squirted all over me. But no, it was a wild fight, and Dean brought it to him, man. Oh, yeah. Dean, if he took the pace from the third round he set on, 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 on Jeff... In the third round, when he when he outboxed him, I think that he would have won the one and three, one two and. One you, know, two. you know, you know who's kind of rumbling amongst each other to want to fight each other, uh, Dean Soon and Damn David Reed. Yeah, I heard I heard yeah, about that. They're like, uh, and I mean, like, these guys are friends and stuff like that, but they're kind of you know rumbling and wanting to compete against each other. I'm like, I don't know, Davin's not uh, one. You know, Dean's like, no, no, I'll drop the 160. Davin, to fight him. no, I I told Davin, you know what? If they both want to do it, I mean, go ahead. Davin's pretty small though. Smaller than Dean for sure. Yeah, like, he's. And I, Davin's Davin, probably like cursing us right now. He's, yeah, he, he's, yo, he he's keeps like, telling me he's like, no, we're the same size, bro. I'm like, no, you're not, Davin. Davin definitely. thinks he's like 220 and like <laughs> you know he could punch anyone yeah. out. Like, like, so, but he wants to fight Dean. <laughs> if Davin was too, <laughs> you gonna fight him? I'd fight Davin. I <laughs> Davin would come up to my weight. He'd be like, yeah, I can fight you at 185. That's, well, you got you got to give the Davin. He will fight anybody anywhere. Dude, anytime. He's, he doesn't I, lack com- yeah. confidence at all. No, I, he will fight. Dude, he he's will. our BJ Penn, bro. He'll go yeah. from 155 to 220. He yeah. doesn't give a shit. No, he doesn't. He really, <laughs> he truly, truly doesn't. And like, this is a guy. Like, I can tell you, like, he's like every weekend. He's like, where, am I, where am I gonna fight? Dude? Can I fight here? Can I fight there? He wants to fight all the time. Yeah. So he's like, uh, he comes up to me. He's like, I've been bugging John. I've been bugging John to put me on Brent's card for that MMA oh, yeah. fight. Oh yeah, he dude. wants to do it. Yeah, he's crazy. So who knows? Who knows what the Northern Fight Six might hold? If we might see the, what's that thing called? The Cyan? The Saiyan? The Saiyan. The Saiyan. I always the say, Cyan. I always I always pronounce it wrong. The Saiyan with uh, against Dan Davin. Uh, you know, even Jeff Cons. I heard there's a bit of a rumor that you know. That uh, they, you know, the Melbrook camp would like to see Jeff fight maybe, uh, what's that guy's name? Mike Wadowski. Mike Wadowski. So who knows? Yeah, there was, uh, yeah, that was a wild time. Yeah. No, I honestly, I, I'd like to see that Mike fight Mike Wadowski too. sounds like the guy from uh, that cartoon. What is it? Uh, <laughs> Mike Wadowski. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure he's never heard that joke before. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like the, uh, that'd be a tough, that'd be a good fight with uh, him and the caveman cons. That'd be a good fight too. I'm yeah. not sure if he'd do it. Because, you know, like, he, he prefers to fight uh, K1-style rules, so he don't know if he'd want to fight him. Davin wants to fight him, too. Man, Davin wants to fight everybody. Davin wants to fight Mike. <laughs> Everyone wants to fight Mike, dude. This is, this is like a list of people that want to fight Mike. <laughs> no, Mike's got to... You know what, Mike? If you're listening, message me, man. We can, yeah, we'll, we set, set we'll set you up a fight. All right, then we move into the main event. Ricky. Ricky. Versus Kevin Singh. I love Ricky, and I drives me crazy because the guy has, you know, he's... It's like he always comes up just a touch bit short. You know, it's the, it's probably one of my most frustrating things as a coach because, you know, he's – this guy has so much skill, so much talent, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, it just seems to come up it's a little a bit short. Beautiful, beautiful movement. Oh, yeah. Uh, what, what kind of – he gives up too much space, and that's what happened, bro. He gave up – he has that karate, like, lead leg style, which is very good if you're, you know – I don't think it works well in the MMA. It's uh, a Muay Thai fight, though. It's tough because, yeah, I, I mean, like, we might have to transition him to MMA because... That's what I told him. Yeah. I told him because after the fight, I came up to him. I yeah. don't want to... I don't... I didn't want to talk about it, like, you know, after yeah, the fight. Yeah, it's not, after it's big not the time. Nobody wants yeah, to yeah. talk about it at that I, time. I just told him, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to talk to John, and I, I'm going to say, we you have a very good MMA striking. Like, you... Yeah. you his his movement was beautiful. Oh, yeah. Like, transitioning. I feel like, you know, all those times when that guy was chasing him and stuff like that, all I can think of is like, man, if we just could double leg right now. Yeah, there was... You there know? was Yeah, there was moments where Ricky would, like, get right underneath of him oh, yeah. and come back up, bang, bang, no, bang. No, he would duck. He would he would uh, slip that, that hook. Yeah. He would slip that hook, come up, hammer the leg kick. Yeah. And then have to start get on his bike and move. Yeah, the guy exactly. Was just kept right? coming forward. And I was like, man, instead of that movement, just like... Who was like, it that during one of the fights... Kept looking like they were going for double leg takedowns. Uh, probably Davin. Okay, that, that yeah. is Davin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Classic Davin. Yeah. yeah. He, da- Davin but should, no, no. Da- but Davin's, Davin's the same. He made no bones about it. He wants to fight MMA too. Yeah. So. But I think uh, Ricky as well, like, you know. So, 
Yeah, no, but I, I mean, aside that guy from, was tough as hell, though. The that guy, guy that, put on a fast pace. Oh my god, rate. from bell to bell. Like I bell can tell you, to bell, bro. Just to give the people an idea. Even like, his bro, his leg was fucking purple. Oh yeah, they, Ricky was hitting him with some in that first round. Ricky hit him with a lot of leg kicks. Mm-hmm. His leg, like we could see it, like up close and personal, it was welted up. Oh yeah, it was red, but he just kept coming. And I can tell you right now, like we've worked with Ricky, and we knew that this kid was gonna have a fast work rate, you know, and a, and a fast pace. Yeah. And we've put Ricky through sessions like where he did not get a break at all mm-hmm. for 45 minutes like nothing so it has no nothing break. to do with where he is at cardio wise no it's ricky's just, cardio was good but this guy's cardio was on another level no this yeah. other guy was on another level and it was it, it was also the style of it was classic clinch versus you know no clinch that's yeah. honestly what it was yeah. and i uh yeah that's all it was right and it, it's not like the way that i i want to like emphasize this to some people is that you know <clears throat> if you're going to fight Muay Thai, you have to learn the clinch, no matter what. Also, one other thing, because <clears throat> I, I know John has to get out of here. His wife's going to be calling, telling him to go home. <laughs> yeah. Where's, but, the, where's the professor? Yeah, where's the professor? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know what? I, I, kudos to Ricky because, you know, skill for skill, I think that Ricky is a better striker yeah. uh, when it comes to that fight. But you know what? They had a game plan. They brought a game plan. It was to close yeah, that they, distance clinch, and they implemented it. They and like, did. and you know what? It, that's that's the game, right? That's you know. I okay. think Ricky, if he got a little, if he could find a way to negate the clinch and work the clinch a little bit more, he'd have no problem. No, I hear you, man. Well, man, that it. That is it. All right. The uh, any any final closing comments on the, on the weekend? <laughs> what about you, Darren? You were there for all of it. Give uh, us give everyone a big basically shout. Basically, not knowing really too much about Muay Thai, I, I just I just didn't like have so much respect for the people that go out there. I don't want to be punched in the face. I do jujitsu. <laughs> like I'm taking a beating as it is on the in the ears mm-hmm. without fighting and having people purposely like hitting me in the face. Yeah. I couldn't imagine. You know what it takes to to be put yourself in that position, knowing you're gonna get hit in the face no matter how good you are. You're eventually gonna have a broken nose. You're gonna have oh, yeah. a broken jaw. Yeah. Like, I, just my props for even getting in the ring and and keep doing it. Like yeah. you're not doing it one time. Oh, I did it once, but they're they're doing it over and over. Yeah, they no, come back exactly. the next day and they're training again and yep. again and. For sure, man. Just great job to everybody and. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for putting yeah. on the event. So, that being said, man, we just want to thank all the different gyms that took part. We want to thank all the professors that came and traveled up to uh, Sudbury here to, to participate in Nomad. And I uh, want to thank all of our students for the continued support. Mm-hmm. And, uh, man. Fake the, dude, we want to thank the fans, all the fans that came fans, out to support. Absolutely, absolutely. Man. We, absolutely. We have the – and you know what? If you talk to the MTO, you talk to rec, the rec promoters and stuff like that, we absolutely have the best fans. Like, every, yeah. you know, the fans get behind the fighters. The mm-hmm. crowd's insane. And the crowd makes the, you know, the fight type things. So. Yeah, I know. It's always a wild a wild card. Every single, every single fight we have, it's always packed over the door, man. It's like wall-to-wall, man, people. It's awesome. Yeah. So right on, man. Well, thank you very much, guys, for sticking around. And uh, guys, on to the next one. Take care.